Okay, welcome to uh, lesson 38. All right, so let's jump into it. So what we're going to be doing now, um, it's a little bit different. It's not going to be transformation so much like we did in the last one. It's kind of fun. It's like a, it's like a little puzzle. We're going to be doing a bunch of like, you know, turning something into something else. So I just want to show you the formula sheet again, though. Um, you guys probably know this on the formula sheet. You've got a, a lot of formulas, right? So far, we've only really done this one for trigonometry. Um, yeah, and, and like a little, maybe like that, those ones a little bit, cosecant and stuff. But now what we're going to be getting into is all this other mess down here. Hey, right? there's all these other ones. So, yeah, so we'll get into that. All right. So what we're doing, we are doing um, identities. So what we're going to be, we're going to be getting something, like some equation, right? Some you know, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta or something like that. And we have to rewrite it in a different way and then try to cancel stuff. It's kind of like the rational expressions uh, unit in 20-1, but now with these different identities mixed in. Okay, so... What's going on here? Okay. So when we're doing these identities... Um, here's generally the steps that you're going to take. There's a lot of different ways that you could solve for these, but just it's a, these are good like things to follow. So first, replace trigonometric ratios with equivalent expressions that contain sine and cosine. That's usually because that's like our building blocks of pretty much all of our stuff. So we want to break it down into sine and cos, and then probably cancel some things from there. Okay. Look for forms of the Pythagorean identity that can be replaced. So we're going to go over that and what that is. Well, to tell you the truth, it's, it's this one. Can we get there? Okay, three, manipulate the expressions algebraically, factoring, creating common denominators, and multiplying by an expression equivalent to one of the most common. So yeah, just playing with it until you can kind of get it to turn into something that you like. Um, yeah, you need to be inventive. There's more than one correct way to show that two expressions are equivalent. If one thing doesn't work, you got to try another. There is no, like, you know, set in stone way to do this. A lot of it's just kind of uh, playing around. It, when asked to prove or show that one side actually equals the other, uh, and, the side and one side seems more complex than the other, try working with a more complex side, because you can just start canceling stuff, usually. It's easier to kind of make a complicated expression smaller by canceling than it is to try to like make a simple expression bigger by multiplying by expressions equal to one. If that made any sense? Okay. So here is our reciprocal identities that we've talked about already. Those should look familiar to you. Um, and then quotient identities. Again, we've done a little bit with this, right? So remember tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. That's like the same thing as y cos theta is the same thing as x when you're on the unit circle. And then cotangent is just the reciprocal, so flipped upside down. <coughs> okay, so let's get into it. So it says, given the equation cosecant theta is equal to cotan theta over cos theta, it says, determine any non-permissible values of theta. Alright, so, so when we say non-permissible values, there's really only two times that, that happens, right? That, that's when you are dividing by zero, which you can't do, or you're taking the square root of a negative, which we really don't have any square roots here. So it's, it's really only going to be when we're dividing by zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sine and cos because I know when they would be zero from looking at the unit circle. So let's rewrite this. So cosecant, right? That's the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to write that as one over sine theta. Okay. I'm going to say that's equal to cotangent is the reciprocal of tan, right? So tan is normally sine over cos, so that would be cos theta over sine theta. I'm going to maybe put it in brackets to kind of remind myself that that is the top part of this expression. Okay, and then cos theta on the bottom. All right, so now I can kind of see it a little bit clearer what I'm looking at here. Um, Hopefully, maybe. So if I'm looking at this side, right, one over sine theta. So I got to be asking myself, okay, when is sine theta equal to zero, right? 
So in comes the unit circle. So if you can't remember, I'm just going to bring up the unit circle for a second to remind you. All right, so when is sine equal to zero? Well, it's right there. Remember, the sine is the y value. So it's equal to zero at zero degrees. It's equal to one up there, so that's fine so far. So it's zero there. And then it's equal to zero at pi. So every pi radians, it's going to be, or 180 or whatever, it's going to be equal to, um, to zero, right? Okay, so if I'm writing down the numbers that's not allowed to be, um, it's not allowed to be, let me just start writing over here. So theta cannot equal zero or pi or two pi. And then, yeah, technically the way you probably want to write that is you'd say theta cannot be equal to uh, pi n, where n is a member of the integers. Okay, so that'd be that part of it. But then just look around. We might have another one that we can't do. Um, I'm looking here, right? So we're dividing by cos theta here. So now I have to think about, okay, where is cos theta equal to zero? So again, the unit circle here, right? Cos, or the x value, is equal to zero at pi over two. And then again at three pi over two. Okay, so if I'm gonna write that one out, I'd say theta is not allowed to be pi over 2 um, n, I can just do it this way, right, times n, because, it, because it's happening every 180 degrees, right, so I didn't, yeah. hopefully that made sense, okay, comma, where n is a member of the integers, okay, so really those, though, that would be my non-permissible values here. I guess technically what we could have done is, uh, you could have went, well, you could have done one thing there too if you wanted to, but I'll leave that. Okay, right. so now um, it says verify the equation for theta is equal to pi over 3. So they're just kind of saying if I actually threw like some angle into these, do the angles actually equal each other? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip a little step here because it's going to be easier to throw this pi over 3 in after I've simplified the expression. Like I could... I could throw it right into the original, right, and figure out it should all work out too. But I think it's going to be better if I simplify this and then and then throw it in. It's just less less to do, right? So I'm sorry for jumping around, but like this is what E is, right? E asks you to prove the equation is an identity. So that what that's doing is just simplifying it. So I'll do that. So I'll start from from here. One over sine theta is equal to cos theta over sine theta. Over cos theta, right? Okay, so that's the one I already wrote. So now I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit different so it's cleaned up a bit. Um, remember, this is like cos over 1 like that, right? That's really what you're looking at. So if I'm dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So let's rewrite this as 1 over sine theta is equal to, and then this would be cos theta over sine theta, and then multiplying by the reciprocal of this, right, was 1 over cos theta. Okay, well that's good, because now my cos theta is cancelled, and I do indeed have 1 over sine theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Okay, so it does work. The left side is equal to the right side, so that proves that identity. Okay, so now I'm going to use this expression, just because it's simple, that's the only reason. I'm just going to use that to verify for pi over 3. So let's go 1 over sine theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Okay, so that would be 1 over sine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 over sine of pi over 3. Okay. So now we just need to ask ourselves, okay, where is sine or the y value equal to pi or where, what is sine at pi over 3, right? So again, if you don't have the unit circle memorized, you should start doing that, but if we're looking here, right, so pi over 3 is right here, right? So I'm saying, okay, what is my what is my y value at pi over 3? Well, that's going to be um, root 3 over 2. Okay, so this could be written as 1 over 
root 3 over 2. And that's also equal to that size, is equal to root 3 over 2. And then multiplying by the inverse, flipping that around, that would just be 2 over root 3. That was a weird 3. Equals 2 over root 3. Okay. And then that's that's good. That that really is my answer. Um, technically, though, you'd probably want to clean this up and and um, and uh, rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root three. But I, th I think you get the gist there, so I'll leave that one there and move on. All right. So now we're getting into the nut nuts and bolts of this now. So it, this is kind of the typical type of thing, right? So we got to simplify this expression. So I'm looking at this, being okay. I got tan. I got a cos. I got a secant. A cotangent. I don't know really secant and cotangent. I don't really think in those terms. So what I want to do is rewrite all these things in terms of sine and cos and see what I got going on. All right, so tan theta. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Okay. I can put that in brackets to kind of remind myself that I just replaced the tangent with that. And then that's times cos theta. And that's all over, oh, sorry, and then secant theta, remembering what secant theta is, that's 1 over um, cos theta. And then cotangent was the reciprocal of tan, right? So that's going to be cos theta over sine theta. All right, so at this point, now that I've got it written in coses and sines, right, I'm going to start to look for things I can cancel. So if I'm just focusing on the top here, right, and not looking at the bottom, I can see that I've got a cos theta on the top and a cos theta on the, in the numerator or the denominator. So you can cancel those, which would leave a 1 down there, by the way, right? It's not just gone. There's still like a 1 in the, in the denominator. Okay, and on the bottom here, I've got cos theta and cos theta. So there's still going to be a 1 in the top. So if I clean this up, what I've got so far is sine theta over 1 divided by 1 over sine theta. Okay, and again, if you want to put the brackets there to kind of keep this straight in your mind, do that. So now dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the sine theta would just get flipped to the top, right? Hopefully you can see that. But in the end, this would end up being sine squared theta. Okay, and remember the sine squared theta. I can't remember if I told you guys that or not. Sine squared theta is the same thing as just writing sine theta squared. It's just a different way of writing it. Yeah, so exactly the same thing. Okay, so sine sine cubed theta would be the same as, you know, they they're, 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 they mean the same thing. There. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so now the Pythagorean identities. It's called it the Pythagorean identities because it comes from Pythagorean theory. So let's, we're looking at our unit circle again, right? So if we went, started here, we went this way, and then we went up. And since we're in the unit circle, we're going to call this 1, right? And then we said that, remember that the y value is the same as sine theta, and the x value is the same as cos theta, right? So we've been doing that, right? That's... That's the unit circle. That's what these are, right? One half, three pi over two, right? That's so that's sine and cos. Okay, so that's straight up where this comes from, right? So if I just apply the Pythagorean theorem to this, then it's going to be sine squared theta plus cos squared theta would be equal to one squared or, or one, right? So so if and so yeah, so you can see that that works now. That should be true on the unit circle, right? So then. What I'm going to look for now is this, right? If I can find sine squared theta plus cos squared theta anywhere in, in the expression that I'm solving for, I can replace that whole thing with 1, right? And we'll do a bit more, you know, moving things around too, like if you need to, that let's say I had sine squared theta minus 1, right? Well, you'd, maybe you'd be able to see from that, right? If I rearrange this by bringing 1 you know, over to that side and cos squared theta over to that side, right? Then I could say, okay, well, sine squared theta minus 1, that's going to be equal to negative cos, theta, cos squared theta, right? 
right? So that's kind of where we're going here. We have to be able to kind of use this guy to move things around to get what we want. Okay, so now where do we get these ones from? Well, if you, if you divide by co squared theta in each term, right? So let's say I had, so let's go, okay, yeah, I, can, I got room down here, good. So let's go co squared theta, so I'm just writing it a little bit different here, but co squared theta plus sine oh, squared theta is equal to 1, right? So just this identity, but just with cos first. And then I divide everything by cos squared theta, right? So cos squared theta, cos squared theta, um, divide by cos squared theta, then that's really going to be it, right? So you're allowed to just divide, as long as you do it by every term, you're allowed to do that, right? So if I do that, those cancel out, I get 1, right? And then here, I've got sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Well, sine over cos is tan. So sine squared over cos squared is just tan squared theta. So plus tan squared theta, right? That's where that comes from. And that's equal to, and then 1 over cos squared theta. Well, 1 over cos is secant, so 1 over cos squared theta is secant squared. Secant squared theta. Okay, so that's where that comes from. And then... Just kind of get a gist here. We're going to write out the other room here, too. If you did the same thing, and we had cos... Actually, I'll write it with sine first, so it looks the same. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And I divided everything by, instead now, sine squared theta. Okay, so everything by that then what ends up happening is something similar, right? So those cancel to 1, and then plus, and then now it's cos over sine, so that's going to be cotangent. Cotangent squared theta. Sorry, I'm, you can see me, I'm going to... Yeah. <laughs> that's equal to 1 over sine squared theta, so that's cosecant. Oh, still cosecant squared theta. Okay. All right, so, yeah. So that works out. So let's go on and start to start to make some sense of these. So now, can we rewrite these guys into something that that we like, right? So I'm looking at this, and like one minus cos squared theta. And as soon as I see like you know one minus or one plus and a cos squared or a sine squared or something, my brain is going to these equations, right? I'm like looking here. I'm looking here, right? Okay, so it's sine, it's cos squared that I got there, right? And then I'm thinking, okay, what if I brought this cos squared theta over to the right, right? Well, that would be 1 minus cos squared theta. So I'm like, okay, so if I rearrange that, then cos squared theta, or sorry, 1 minus cos squared theta would be equal to sine squared theta. Hopefully you guys were able to see that. Maybe I'll write it up here. So we got sine squared theta is equal to cos squared theta. Oh, sorry, plus. Plus is equal to 1. Okay, so if I rewrite this, I've got sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, right? Well, that's what we got here. So what I get to do is I just get to replace the top here with sine squared theta. That's, that's what it's equal to. Okay? And now I'm thinking just the, with the way we did that, it's probably some, something similar on the bottom, right? So I'm going to look to my formula sheet, and I'm going to go, okay, so I've got, I've got secant squared theta minus 1. So I'm looking here to the secant squared part of it, right? Secant squared theta minus 1, well, yeah, okay, so perfect. If I bring the 1 over, right, that's going to be secant squared theta minus 1. So that's all going to be equal to tan squared theta. Okay, so that's going to be tan squared theta. So it's a little simpler, but again, I want to see if there's things I can cancel. So I'm going to rewrite this tan squared theta in terms of sine and cos. So let's rewrite this again now as... I shouldn't put an equal sign because that numbers are just uh, simplifying. I'm going to put like an arrow. 
Okay, so now I've got sine squared theta over, and now tan is sine over cos, right? So it's going to be sine squared theta over cos squared theta. All right, so dividing by the fraction, the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you can see when we do that here, if I flip it upside down, my signs would cancel, and you end up getting just cos squared theta. Hopefully you guys were able to do that. I kind of ran out of the room, so I, so, I, so I didn't actually flip it, but if you guys want to do that to see, then, then do that. Okay, so now B, I'm looking at this one, and I'm saying, okay, well, I've got it in terms of sine here and, and here, right? But let's first just, like, replace the cotangent squared theta in terms of sine and cos. Like, maybe, maybe it'll work out nicely. So let's try, here, I'll do color here. So let's go sine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And then now I'm going to rewrite this cotan theta as uh, cos squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay, well that worked out nice because now my sines cancel. So now I've got sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Well, I know what that is, right? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. You need to start getting good at recognizing that when you see it, right? Certain, certain of the, like, these identities, right? That's the name of the game is just being able to recognize them when, when you see them. So that's equal to 1. Okay, that was right from the original identity there. Okay, right, let's so move on. Now, we have to do something a little bit different here now. So we have sine to the 4 theta minus cos to the 4 theta. That doesn't really seem like anything yet. But what we can do is uh, maybe a little bit of factoring here, right? So just to remind you, like I know that look, when it's written as sine and cos, it's, it looks a little confusing. But what if I had it written like this? What if it was just um, written like y to the 4 minus x to the 4. Maybe you'd start to recognize that as a difference of squares. Right? So now you could rewrite this as you know, y squared minus x squared and then uh, y squared plus x squared. Yeah, maybe. Okay. It's going to be the exact same thing with sine, with sine and cos. So let's just write that all out with sine and cos. So it's going to be sine squared theta minus cos squared theta, right, and for one of them. And then the other one is going to be sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. All right, so now I'm looking at it, being like, okay, so now I have a few identities here. Well, just one, really. This guy, well, that's all equal to one, right? So now it turns out that our whole expression can just be simplified to sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. And that, you might be thinking, but can I do something with that, right? That seems like maybe. And I'm looking at my, you know, my sheet here. No, I don't really have anything for like, you know, subtracting the two of those. So, no, there's nothing we can do from there. Okay. Now, this one, what I'm going to do, just for more room, hopefully you guys have enough room there, I'm going to write this down here. So I'm going to go uh, sine theta over cos theta plus cos theta over sine theta, and then over, over 1 over sine theta. Okay, so nice and confusing. All right, so here, here is another common, I don't want to say trick, but technique that we're going to use is look at the top and just deal with the top for a second. We can we can figure out this, this one over sine theta easy enough, but on the top I've got a fraction, right? I've got something over something plus something over something, and I can't, like I could call it like, you know, tan if I wanted to, but that's not really going to help me here. 
So one of the, what we're going to do here is we are actually going to write this numerator, this top one, over one, uh, one common denominator. All right, so if we're doing that, right, so for, for these guys, what would the common denominator be for, for those two terms, right? This one's over cos, this one's over sine. Well, the common denominator there, the common denominator there would be, so I'm just looking at the top here now, right? I'm just looking up here. The common denominator there would be um, cos, maybe I'll do the whole thing, just ignore the bottom for a second. Okay, so the, the, the common, as so I'm looking here, right, the common denominator would be cos theta times sine theta. Right? That's what they would both go into. So if I was doing that then, what I would have to do to this term, right, is I would have to multiply that term by, by what? Well, in order to get this common denominator, I had to multiply this cos by sine, right, sine theta to get that. So I also have to multiply the top by sine theta. Yeah? Hopefully that's making sense. And then over on this side, right, I had to multiply this sine theta to turn this into cos squared, or cos theta, sine theta. I had to multiply that by cos theta. So I also have to multiply the top by cos theta. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe, I'm hoping this makes sense to you. I, I skipped a step here where I wrote it all, like, all over that common denominator. You could have written it as two separate ones first. Maybe I'll do that just in case people are getting confused here. So if you got that, great, but, but let's do this. So I'm going to rewrite just this, right, over here. So that'd be sine, sine squared theta over sine theta cos theta plus, now this part over here, right, um, cos squared theta over sine theta cos theta. Okay, so that's really what I did there, but then I just, I'm rewriting this all over just one common denominator here, right? So the top now could be written as sine theta, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Aha! Uh -huh. That's a thing, right? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. That's one. So, I, so yeah, I have that one. So that's going to be that's going to, oh, and sorry, maybe I should, before I get ahead of myself here, this is all over 1 over sine theta, just to be confusing. Okay, so now, cl cleaning this, this guy, so cleaning this one up, the top here, like we said, the top here, that's equal to 1. So I'm going to say 1 over cos theta sine theta over, I'm going to put that in brackets to keep myself straighter, 1 over sine theta. Okay, so now if I flip that one, right, if I flip that and multiply, I end up with um, 1 over, 1 over cos theta sine theta times sine theta over 1, and my sine theta is cancel, and I end up with 1 over 1 over cos theta. All right, so simplify to that, or you could say that that was the same thing as secant theta, 1 over cos theta. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I know there's a lot there. The big one for this, guys, is going to be practicing. Like, it, like, for example, you know, if we go back here, there's a few little tricks that we did here, right? Like, like this one. You guys need to just be good at seeing this, right? That when you see 1 minus cos squared theta, you need to be good at going like, oh, aha, I know what that is. You know, like, that's practice. That's just recognizing when you see it. The same thing over here when we, well, this one we just had to rewrite in terms of sine and cos. But then recognizing, you know, sine squared plus cos, cos squared is equal to 1. You know, this type of situation where you've got a difference of squares, Sorry, like, you, you just got to recognize it. It is well lunch today, baked spaghetti, and it also is Christmas time. Okay.
And yeah, and then this one, this is a pretty common thing that we do as well. This like writing this term here over the same denominator. So this process that we did here, especially, I don't know, like when, when I saw this, it's like, a, like as soon as I saw the way that this was all written, I knew it was going to be one of those ones, right? When you got like something in fractions up in the numerator, that's probably the little trick is what we did down here that you're going to have to do. So yeah, like I said, practice, make sure that you know what you're, what you need to look for. Okay. So that's it. Um, yeah. See you guys in class.